A National Public Radio employee plans a USF visit. Sioux Falls continues the event center debate, and College Week sports crew takes a closer look into fantasy football. All this and more coming up next on College Week. Jeske Fine Arts Center on the campus of the University of Sioux Falls. This is a College Week News Update. Good morning, I'm Michelle Jacobs. And I'm Stephanie Kurtz. Thanks for joining us. Vivian Schiller, President and CEO of National Public Radio, will be coming to USF to celebrate the 25th anniversary of KCSD. KCSD is a South Dakota public broadcasting station connected to NPR that is maintained by USF. The radio station made its debut on July 1, 1985. Before joining NPR, Schiller worked for the New York Times as the Senior Vice President and General Manager of NYTimes.com. NPR is known for its efforts in non-biased journalism. They have nearly 900 stations and almost 3 million listeners. Schiller will be speaking on Thursday, October 14th at 7 p.m. in the Jeske Auditorium. Her goal is to discuss her vision for the future of public broadcasting and to tell USF how its station will fit into the picture. She will also be speaking in classes on Friday, October 15th. Mayor Mike Huther unveiled his plan for the new Sioux Falls Event Center Monday. Huther says he plans to capitalize on existing infrastructure by keeping the old arena and convention center standing and erecting the pro's $99.5 million structure alongside it. He says this will maintain maximum floor space and grow programming capabilities. This also means it will use and expand on existing parking and will grow the facility to seat up to 12,000 spectators. Huther says there are still many decisions to make and acknowledges the fact that it will be no easy task. More decisions will be announced every second Monday of the month at 4 p.m. during the City Council informational meetings held at Carnegie City Hall. South Dakota's higher education programs continue to expand as University Center in Sioux Falls celebrated significant growth. Executive Dean Mark Lee says enrollment is up 3.6% this year and attendance trends indicate the school's population has doubled in the last decade. The University Center gives people in the Sioux Falls area access to programs from the University of South Dakota, South Dakota State, Dakota State, Northern State, and Black Hill State. With the start of a new school year, the University of Sioux Falls not only has new faces on campus, but also has a new logo. USF revealed the new logo to the public last spring, and since then have also started a new advertising campaign. Stay tuned for next week's episode to hear more on what students and faculty think about the University of Sioux Falls' fresh look. Coming up after the break, Joshua Duncan sits down with campus pastor Dennis Toome. Don't go away. Good morning and welcome to another edition of Crosstalk. This morning I have my guest with me, Dennis Toome, campus pastor. Good morning, Dennis. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Glad good. to be here. I'm glad you're here. So how's things going this year? It's off to a good start. I think there's a lot of good signs on campus of enthusiasm and uh, high participation in a lot of activities. So it's off to a good start. Well, good. Dennis, I've been here a while. I'm not going to say how many years, but how many years have you been here? This is my 20th fall. 20th so. fall. Wow, that's almost as old as I am. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I, uh, when I started here, a lot of our well, students weren't even born yet. So seen a lot of changes here over the years. Yeah. So uh, as far as being a campus pastor, what's one thing you look forward to at the beginning of each year? Well, it's always interesting to see how things will actually flesh out. You spend your summer planning things, and then you wait to see what will work and what has to change. And uh, it's, it's always an, a dynamic place, so it's always interesting to see how it all wor actually works out. What's, uh, what's like the mission or goal of the campus ministry? Campus ministry's goal is to come alongside everything else, that we're there to assist other programs and other parts of the school. We're not the center of attraction. We're here to help uh, further the spiritual mission of the school. So we help facilitate things, and we do chapel, and we do small groups and service projects, and it's all part of our greater mission as, uh, as a university. Um, although the campus is a Baptist-based college, but there's, you know, it's really a melting pot of a lot of different people's mm -hmm. uh, church backgrounds. So how do you guys kind of do chapel? Or, or what's your, how do you kind of reach all the students with chapel? It's very important that we remember what we have in common. And so that's really our philosophy as a school, that we identify ourselves as a Christian school. And it's true that we're a part of the American Baptist denomination, but we really focus on what Christians focus on, uh, the focus of Christianity, which is Jesus Christ. So in our planning, we try to bring in a variety of Christians from a variety of different callings um, and talk about what we have in common. What are some things um, that students can look forward to with chapel this year as far as any special guests or speakers? Well, we always bring in special guests. Last week, we had, or two weeks ago, we had Eric Tim, who was an artist and spoke and did his artwork. And we'll bring in a variety of people throughout the year like that. Um, it depends. Sometimes you get people at the last minute and you change your schedules. And so we're still working on some things for some guest speakers yet this year. And then a lot of it is uh, uh, using our own people. Dr. Higgle, Dr. John Higgle, head of the theology department, will be speaking in chapel. and. And, uh, and so we would use a variety of people on campus. Next week is homecoming chapel, so we're going to be doing uh, things with uh, not only the music department, but also with coaches. Uh, Coach Stugart is going to lead in prayers, praise and worship, since he has that skill, and uh, try to pull the campus together in that way. That's really great. What, uh, as far as students, how can they get involved with chapel each week? Well, there's a lot of ways to get involved. We, we, in chapel, uh, we talk a lot about service projects. In the coming weeks, we're going to serve a meal at the banquet. Uh, we're going to take students up to the penitentiary to work, uh, participate in worship services there. Uh, we have an ongoing mentoring ministry uh, as a university that we try to feed students into. And then we're always trying to connect people to uh, local churches as well because they have many things going. And our pr priority is to try to get students plugged into churches and serving there. Uh, as far as uh, students getting plugged in, you lead uh, some J-term trips. Um, you've done it in the past. What's, what's kind of in the future this year? Um, this year, uh, we're going to take our fourth trip to Jamaica. Uh, and uh, people think of Jamaica as a vacation place, and it is. But we get to see the other side of Jamaica, and we work with an, an orphanage in, outside of Montego Bay called Robin's Nest. And our students have been going there uh, over the years, serving in everything from rocking babies, doing laundry, uh, doing construction. And right now they're being hammered with a tropical storm. And so my guess is when our students go in January, there's going to be a lot of repair work to do. Um, if I was a student, I wanted to get, go, what, what would I do? We have our meetings. We announce a lot of this through chapel and then through our campus ministry emails. And so people just need to be heads up with what we're sending out. And, uh, and the best way to find out about what we're doing is to come to chapel on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. What's been some of the feedback what, when students have gone in the past? It's, it's always good. It's often life-changing, and I know we use that as, an, as a cliche, but when you get into a, a third world setting, or in the case of the, the, the orphanage, a little bit second world, and some things are first world, but then you walk down the hill and it's third world again, and you get in that kind of context, it always changes the way you think, and you never see things the same way again. So we try to get students plugged into those kind of ministries. Sometimes it's with organizations like Campus Crusade for Christ. We've had students in Ghana, and we've had students in uh, Central America, South America. We send them out wherever we can with, with good organizations and allow God to start changing their lives. Well, thank you, Dennis, for uh, joining us this morning. Next up after the break is our sports team.
And up now is a fantasy football update with self-appointed fantasy football experts Sarah Bettinger and Brett Geese. Hello and welcome to the first installment of the fantasy football update. I'm Sarah Bettinger. And I'm Brett Geese. All right, so now we're going to look at some of Brett and my um, hot and cold players for fantasy football right now going into week five. The players that have been big so far, I think, I'm not going to try to go with the big names like Aaron Rodgers because everybody knows he's been doing good. But a guy like Phillip Rivers or Kyle Orton, the guys that they do their thing week in, week out, but their record doesn't show it. Phillip Rivers has been a couple weeks ago, he just threw for 455 yards. So if you have him in one of your leagues, yeah, it may be risky because he might throw a couple picks. But overall, he's going to get you the yards. He'll get you a couple touchdowns a game. It's just what he does. And other guys like Keem Nix, it's been shown that he is Eli Manning's favorite target. Get him deep at least a couple times a game, you know you're going to get a lot of fantasy points. He might not give you all the catches, but he's certainly going to give you a decent amount of yards a week. Some of the cold guys, uh, I definitely think Ray Rice has been a disappointment this season. He's not getting a lot of yards, not getting any touchdowns. Um, and this, uh, in the next couple weeks, um, the Ravens play against a couple good uh, run defenses. So um, I don't know. I would I would continue to use him as a running back too, a high priority. But um, just be careful. Maybe if you uh, are in need of something, another position, I might get something for him in a trade while you still can. Uh, another guy I really don't like right now is Steve Smith of the Giants, even with Mario Manningham going down with an injury. Um, I just think the Giants are a mess right now, and I think Hakeem Nix, as Brett said, is definitely the top target on the Giants um, in the Giants' passing attack. So I would definitely stay away from Steve Smith unless you use a PPR league where he can be somewhat useful, um, possibly get 8 to 10 points per week. And that's a wrap for this week's fantasy football update. If you have any questions on stardom or sit -em, you can just give us a call. The emails are at the bottom of the screen. Yep, sayer.bettinger at yusufalls.edu or brett.geese at yusufalls.edu. Back to you in the studio. And that wraps up another College Week update. I'm Stephanie Kurtz. And I'm Michelle Jacobs. Have a great day.